In this example, we're going to show you how to build the vectors to create the nameplate you see on the screen. We're going to show you how to use the snapping tools to create and align our vectors. And we will also show you how to access the font database to create the text and also the node editing tools to modify it before we think about machining. We'll need to start by creating a new file by going to File, Close. So I'm going to start now by creating a new file. So File, New. And I'm going to start with a single sided job. The width is going to be 8.5, the height is going to be 2.5 inches, thickness will be an eighth of an inch, so 0.125. I'm going to be zeroing off the material surface and the XY datum position in this case is going to be from the center. So I'll click OK. And now we've got our rectangular workpiece, we can start by creating some vectors. So coming up to the create vectors section. We click on draw rectangle and that will open up the form where we can set the dimensions of our rectangle. So the anchor point first, we want that to be centered on the workspace. So X zero, Y zero. Our corner type, instead of being square, we want that radius external and we're going to choose a radius of 0.1 inches. The width we'd like to be 7.75 inches and the height 1.75 inches. So we can go ahead and click create and that will place that on the workspace centered around the XY datum. And now we have that in position, what if we wanted to make modifications to that? Well, we can do that by first holding down shift, selecting the object, and then you can change the parameters in the form to alter the shape. So say we wanted to change the radius of the corner, we can alter that there, click apply again. But you are also able to dynamically set the radii of all four corners at the same time from the 2D view. So if you come over to the workspace, you'll see that there are four green points in each corner. So if you hover the cursor over this area, you'll see the icon change to this double-ended arrow. Then by clicking and holding the left mouse button, if you drag that in towards the center, you'll see that the external radius is increasing and then Still holding down the mouse button, if you move that away from the center, you'll see the radius decreasing. But as well as that, you can change it to an internal radius by, again, clicking and holding down the left mouse button, and this time dragging away from the center to increase the internal radius. And then moving back into the center to decrease it. And that's just a really good way of quickly visualizing where you'd like the corners to be if you don't have an exact radius in mind. But for now, I'm just going to put that back to 0.1. Click apply to commit the shape and then we can close out of the form. Next, we're going to take a look at the four circles for the drill holes, which will help fix the nameplate onto the wall. So this time I'm going to come up to the draw circle command under create vectors. And we know that we want a circle with a diameter of a sixteenth of an inch. So if you don't know the decimalization of that, you can enter 1 over 16. Then hit equals on the keyboard and that will give you the decimal of 0 0.0625. And with that set and the geometry snapping on, we can then bring the cursor down to the corners of the rectangle and you'll see that as you move them in, a black point will appear to indicate that you're placing that in the corner. So you can just quickly go around and snap those into place. You can see it's really easy to place these. Just snaps straight to the point there. And once we have those in place, we can close out of that form. And now we're going to think about creating the internal border for this nameplate. And for that, we're going to need the create rectangle tool again. So if we go back up to draw rectangle to open the form, and this time, instead of inputting a size with a fixed X and Y, you can just bring the cursor over and hover it over the midpoint of this circle that we created. And then holding down the left mouse button, we're just going to drag that down to the bottom right circle and then just let go to apply that and you'll see that the rectangle has been created with a radius external corner and in this case we'd actually like a radius internal so I'm just going to switch that over and just click apply and now you can see that we've got an even gap between the inner and outer vectors around the circle so we can now close out of the form. And with our border completed it's now time for the next part of this which would be adding some text. So to do this, we're just going to open the draw text tool under create vectors again. And the first thing that we're going to want to do when we open the form is select our font. So uh, we want to be using brushed script MT in this case. So 
Once we've got the drop down box, we can just hit B on the keyboard and that'll take us down to the Bs and then we can just scroll down until we find the font that we'd like. We don't want it to be bold or italicized so we can leave those unchecked. The text alignment we want in the center and for this we want a text height of one inch. Put one in there and we can see that the anchor points already at X0, Y0 so that's placed in the center where we'd like it. So I'm just going to start typing in vector phone. Okay, and then we can close out of that. And now we need to look at moving it into place. So with that, I'll just come over to the text. Just click again to select it. And you'll see in the center, we've got this point. So if you hover your cursor over, you'll see that it's picked up the center line. So I'm gonna click and hold down the left mouse button. And I'm just gonna drag that down until it snaps into the center there. And then I'm gonna let go to place it. Now at this point, there's still some issues that we'd need to address before thinking about machining this. One you can see quite clear, clearly is the fact that we've got overlapping letters, so we just need to merge this into one object. And also some of the gaps in between the letters are not correct, so I just need to address the kerning as well. So if we look at addressing the second thing first, if we just come over to the Edit Text Spacing and Curve command under Create Vectors. And with that selected, if I then bring the curse back into the workspace, you'll see that as you move between two letters, this symbol appears indicating to me that if I click the mouse button, it's going to move those two letters together. But if I then hold down shift and click again, you'll see that it moves them away from each other. So it'll automatically separate the letters if you move the cursor in between them, but then holding down shift will reverse that and mean that the letters will move away from each other, widening the gap between the two. So I'm just gonna go through and make some minor modifications here. So I maybe want to lessen the gap between the V and the E, and maybe the E and the C, and I'll probably bring the H and the O closer together there as well, and also the N and the E. And you can carry on making modifications there until you're happy with the shape, but that's looking good to me, so I can now come out of the command. And now I can think about trying to make this one single object without the overlapping text, which will make it a lot easier to machine when we come to do the V carving later. So to do that, with the object still selected, I'm gonna come over to the Edit Objects section and the Weld command. I'm going to select that and you'll get a notification telling you that some objects are converted to curves for this operation and would you like to replace or keep the original objects? In this case, we're gonna replace the original objects because they're not required, so just go ahead and apply that. And if we just take a closer look at this, we can see that there's still some areas to clean up, so this join between the C and the T and the O and the P here, it's just misshapen. Um, so we can have a look at clearing some of those up. So we're just going to select the object again and click in on the keyboard to go in the node edit mode. And this just shows the individual points and the tangencies and magnitudes that make up these curves. And we can start thinking about which modifications we'd like to make here. So if we just click off, we can see that this curve looks okay until it gets to this step here. So we'd maybe like to make this one smooth curve up the side of the T. So if we go into node edit mode, zoom in, and because we're really looking to match this curve with this section here, this span, maybe we'd like to delete this point so we can just hover the cursor over that point either right click delete point or alternatively you can just hover the cursor over that point and click d on the keyboard and you can see that's then deleted the point out and joined it onto the next span uh, this point down here we've also got the same issue so again hovering the cursor over the point we can press d on the keyboard to delete that out and maybe we can just move the handle here to change the tangency slightly. So you can see we've got a much smoother transition there from the C to the T. And moving over uh, to the next problem area, we can see between the O and the P here, got this, uh, this kink in the line. So we can again hover in the cursor over the point, we press D on the keyboard to delete that. And you can see that we've got a bit of a tangency issue here. So what we do to correct that, we come over to the handle, click and hold the left mouse button and just moving that round, you can see that that changes the direction of the line to match the, the next span. And here also we've got, um, got two points here, so we've got a very small diversion there, so we can delete the point, move the tangency round, 
quite in a smooth transition. And looking at that part there, it's not very smooth. So I might look to just smooth out that line. So just come back in, hovering the mouse over the point. This time, either right click and smooth point or hovering the cursor over and clicking S on the keyboard. And then we can drag the handle back down until it matches the curve. There we go, that looks much better. And then we can just zoom out and just have a look at the, the whole thing. And that's actually looking great. So we've got the name plat now almost ready for machining. But what I'd like to do next is just enlarge this V just to give it a little bit more prominence on the plaque. And that is actually a separate entity there. So if I just select that and come out of the node editing mode by clicking N on the keyboard again. And so I can reset the size. I'm just going to click again, just to put that into transform mode. And I'm just going to hover the cursor over this top corner point and holding down the left mouse button, I'm just going to drag that up into the top left hand corner just a bit more and then I'm going to use the down arrow on the on the keyboard just to reposition that maybe just kick that across to the left slightly and I'm liking the look at that so it's just giving the V a bit of emphasis over the rest of the text but currently the text looks a little bit squashed into this plaque so I'm just going to want to stretch this out just so it fills a bit of the empty space so to do that, I'm just going to box pick this from right to left. So making sure I touch all of those vectors there. And whilst that's selected, I can then come across under the transform objects menu to set selected object size. So we'll just click into there. And because I actually want to stretch this text out, I'm going to switch link X, Y off so that when I change the dimensions in X, it's not going to affect it in Y. And I know the dimensions I want in this case. So I'm just going to select the width is going to be seven inches. So an increase in X, and I'm actually going to reduce it in Y to 1.2. So when I apply that now, it's actually going to stretch the text across the plaque. But in doing that now, you can see that the gap on the left hand edge is different to that of the right hand which means I actually need to center that onto the workpiece. So if I come across now, close out of the form, and then with the object still selected, I need align selected objects. And under the align to material at the top, we're going to choose middle option to align to material. And that will then center that onto the material around our X, Y datum in the middle. And with that done, the final thing to do on this design is the nameplate tag, which will go in the lower right hand corner. So to do that, I need to select the create text tool again. And in the form, rather than the true type font, I'm going to want the single line font this time. I'm using the avant-garde font. So you can see it at the top there. So we'll just select that. I want the text alignment to be in the center. The text height will be 0.125. And I'm just going to click roughly. It doesn't have to be accurate at this point where you want that to be placed. So I'll just go there and then I'll just start typing in serial space no dot space zero 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 one and with that now i've got the basis of the text so i can close out the form and we can come over to have a look by zooming in so i do want to reposition this but before i do that i just want to sort out some of the space in between the text as it's quite tight on the word serial there's a much larger gap between the dot and the first zero and between serial and no and maybe we could even reduce the gap between the one and the zero at the end so with that, we're going to come back up to the edit text space and curve and just bring the cursor down to the text. You'll see that it automatically uh, brings up the icon to indicate that it's going to bring the text closer together. So we need to click shift on the keyboard, holding that down, click a couple of times just to separate these, separate that part. It's looking good. And then we're going to want to narrow the gap between these and also between the no and the treble zero. And also the same with the zero and the one at the end. So I'm much happier with that text spacing now, so I can come back out of that. And I'm just gonna go and pick this up now. And we're going to move it by clicking and putting it back into transform mode. And you'll see that you've got a number of points around the edge of the text, but I'm gonna ignore that now and just hover my cursor over the bottom right-hand corner of the purple text. And now I've got that where I want to, I'll just click and hold the left mouse key down. And you can see I can just pick up and move that wherever I want it. So we're just going to move it over. And I'm going to bring it up here in line with the edge of the E. And you'll see that snap line has just appeared. And then I'm going to bring it down. And I want to meet the top of the arc of this corner here. So we can see we've got that now. And the point of those two lines meeting is where I want to place the text. So as soon as that appears, 
showing the two snap lines, I can just release and it'll place it exactly where I want it. And with that final step, the sign's now complete, so I'm happy with that and we can go ahead and save the part ready for toolpathing, which is covered in a later video, which is included in the related videos to this presentation. So I'm just gonna go up to File, Save As, and I'm gonna save that as Vectorphone VectorDrawing.crv, and we can click Save. And now that's all ready for toolpathing at a later point.